So this is a good like morning jam song, huh? Like like Sunday morning coffee. <laughs> sure. So that one was called Yeti. That's from Mocha again. Uh, running out of tracks from those nice young fellows. I, I'll have to pick up some more from them. I think. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. Uh, just search for Mocha, and it's like M zero T R A. Uh, if you type in the URL. I'm here today with Nicole from Sassy Girl. That's how I always refer to you. Right. Um, <laughs> partly because I have a problem where I don't call people by their last names and then I don't know I'm uncomfortable saying it wrong. <laughs> it's, it's Zeke. And I know you told me that before. So like, <laughs> I, so okay. I, did, I answer to Sassy Girl. People so do I did just know that. call me Sassy Girl and I just answer to that. So uh, where did the name Sassy Girl come from? Me, actually. It was a nickname. From who? Who gave you that? My friends. My friends, they yeah. called me Sassy Girl, and I had, um, when I worked in St. Louis, my screensaver on my computer said Sassy Girl, it flashed it, and so then when I came up here and decided to open the boutique, um, I was thinking, yeah, I should really just use Sassy Girl, because that was so me, and my friends were like, well, if you don't, we're going to be mad, because that's you. Right. So, uh, what kind of stuff you carry there? I carry women's clothing and accessories from uh, casual to formal. So we go from you know tops and jeans and casual dresses to formal dresses. I have uh, an extensive collection of um, special occasion jewelry and everything, plus just regular casual jewelry and handbags. So I know you're huge for uh, prom season. Homecoming. Homecoming. I'm sorry. I, that's all the same to me. I don't know. Right. I, I don't right. Know Homecoming. Um, and you're located in the Broadway district. Yes, at 107 North Broadway, right on the corner of Broadway and Walnut. So you're sort of a landmark. You, uh, I think you celebrated some kind of special milestone in your business. 11 years in July. Yeah, which is uh, which is crazy because I can't. I've known you those 11 years. So I that's, know it's crazy. That's uh, yeah, it's totally crazy. Um, so uh, do you have some specials lined up for that, or is that all over? Um, that was all over. It was in July, so we always run a sale the entire month of July. The entire store is on sale. Um, there's not an item in there that isn't on sale, which is great because that's the only time of year that like the special occasion stuff goes on sale. Um, and it was, it's pretty hefty discounts in that month. So now we're just back to kind of regular business. You right. know, all the fall stuff is coming in. And then we're heading into homecoming season, which is huge for us. So like... Percentage wise, is that a big part of your year, or it's yes. just you're just okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, what brought you to that point? What what you know, retail is hard. Being in business is hard. Period. Uh, why the heck did you do that? <laughs> why did I start? Yeah. Um, you know, I've always wanted to. I've always kind of wanted to do my own thing. I've worked for other companies. I have a degree in design. I went and did the corporate thing. Um, found out that I'm really not a corporate kind of gal. Um, I don't have a poker face. That's, you know, generally not good in the corporate world. Um, I just, I'm more of an outside of the box kind of person. And I've always in the back of my mind wanted my own thing. I had actually been hoarding things for years. Like I'd been hoarding mannequins and, you know, so by the time I decided to open my business, I had all the mannequins and everything like that. So it was just kind of a natural transition. I quit my job in the corporate world in St. Louis and came home, and this was actually supposed to be a pit stop. I was just going to figure out what I wanted to do next and move on. And then I decided, well, you know what, what better time when I don't have anything going on to open my own? And, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. It was the perfect time to do it. And I was at home where I have family and friends. So if I needed the help, I would have it. And I figured what better place to do it than Green Bay, who... But at that time, we lagged a little in the fashion area. So I figured, you know, I could help us out in there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. Can you bleep that out? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. So, uh, so you've been here 11 years, uh, you, but you're originally from Green Bay, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, a common thread among everybody that I've interviewed so far is some of the things you touched on. They saw a need and they, you know, kind of went for it. They took some risks and uh, they don't fit into a box. I think that that would uh, categorize everybody so far and probably forever because, you know, those are my people. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, uh, so tell me a little bit more about your family life and uh, like bringing, bringing, you know, kind of bringing you up to where, you know, where you started. 
Um, I mean, I grew up in Green Bay. I have two sisters. Um, we're completely different. I'm the fashion queen of the family. They are don't really want anything to do with that. So I was like the oddball of the family. Um, when I said I wanted to go into fashion, I mean, none of them were surprised. It wasn't like a, oh my God, really? You want to do that? I mean, for me, Barbie was always dressed impeccably, so pretty much everybody knew what I was going to do. Um, my dad was a little concerned because fashion, what are you going to do with that? Is that a career that you're going to be able to sustain yourself with? You know, he kind of had no clue. Um, he started to get on board probably when he came to my college fashion show and actually saw the work that we were doing and thought, oh, okay, now I get it. And so then when I landed my first corporate job designing, well, then he was over the moon because he's a corporate kind of guy. So that was like, you know, the best thing in life for him was when I got a corporate job. So when I left that job, (laughs) he was not very thrilled with that. And, you know, when I decided then to come back here and open a store, Mm -hmm. that was not a thrilling decision for him either um, because it is risky. It's not a steady paycheck. It's, you know, there are weeks that... Uh Uh-oh, gosh, I got to be a little creative with the money this week. I didn't do so well. And for him, that's just not in his realm. He's a, he worked for IBM for 36 years. He's a corporate guy. You get a paycheck every week. You, there's just, it's regular, it's steady. It's being an entrepreneur isn't, it's, it's never steady. I feel like the risk-taking gene kind of skips a generation. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. My uh, mom was behind me. I mean, as soon as I said, I, you know, I, I'm thinking of opening a store, I mean, her first comment was, oh, honey, you'd be so great at that. I mean, if I said I wanted to be president, my mother would be campaigning in the streets. That's right. just the way she is. Yeah. And I would say that those two things, you know, they're both supportive, but my mom and dad are sort of like the f- mirror image of that, where my mom is like, I, I don't know, I would, you know, get a job. And, uh, you know, my dad has had jobs. And I think he uh, understands, at least, uh, you know, even if he would do it differently. Right. Right. Um, but they're, you know, they're both pretty supportive. They're like, they're not wealthy because they've worked jobs and, you know, they had a bunch of kids and, right. you know, uh, read something this morning where, uh, uh, like Bernie Sanders, the guy running for president mm-hmm. said, uh, a generation ago, you know, like 30 years ago, uh, a one income family, uh, was making more than a two income family today. I don't think that's true. I feel like when I was growing up, we were pretty broke and I feel like, you know, now we all have, you know, 50 inch flat screen TVs and True. everybody's got an iPhone. You but know? I also think there's more expenses nowadays, too. I mean, even just um, when your kids are in school and, and sports, that's such a bigger expense than what it was when we were in school. I mean, it was just you played for the school. It's you didn't have to invest a ton of money in it. You didn't. You know, I mean, I think everything has gotten so much more now. Yeah. And I think parents are working basically for that, you know, to give their kids that life. And I I think it was just different when we were young. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of that, but, um, the, uh, kids are in so much stuff now. I wasn't in that much stuff. Like, yeah, I I mean, I was, I was in sports, but I also feel, I mean, like for my parents, you know, when they worked, my grandparents took care of me. And I don't. I think we have less of that now, whereas kids have to go into daycare and stuff like right. that, and that's a huge expense to families. Absolutely. I mean, my parents didn't have to pay a cent. My grandparents took me every day. That was just natural back then. Yeah. Not so much now because those generations actually work and have jobs, so they're not at home like our grandparents were. Yeah, but they also have summer homes and boats and, you know. Well, yeah. Some of them. <laughs> well, a, a lot. Yes. A lot do. I don't know. So, like, that's hard for me to, I don't know. That just that just kind of hit me this morning. So, uh, do you still design I don't. Clothes, no. I don't. I, I don't have time yeah. with everything that I'm involved in, just the daily yeah. operations. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how do, you, how do you do that? Because it's hard to... Uh, like I, I have different parts of my brain where I have like creative part where I can be creative and then I have like worker drone part where I'm like churning through some work that's right. sort of like more mindless, right? And it's hard to switch that on demand. Right. Like some you know, some sometimes you just can't control it and it's there, right? But so I also yeah. found that, you know, I'm I don't want to say not good at the design part, but that's just, I found that after I had the degree in it and worked in it, that actually is not where my passion lies. Really? And I like retail. 
yeah. and everybody thinks I'm crazy. I don't. I, but uh, I like retail. Yeah. I missed I missed interacting with customers. I worked retail all through college. So, I mean, I had a background and I've been doing it actually since I was 15. So, then to go into the corporate world, yeah, I can design it and all that, but it's it, it's not creative design. It's designed by committee. I mean, we need to have 50 meetings to decide if that shade of purple is the correct shade for that season. Absolutely. So it's not creative. It's you're designing in a box and you're designing for the masses. So it's not, you know, it's not a really a creative process. And I found it's more that, science than art. Yeah, it is. And yeah. so I found that it was like, well, I miss the people part of it. I miss putting the looks together. I miss merchandising the store, you know, because I can put I can give you the look. I can, you know, design the piece that goes in the store, but I can't tell them how to put it on the floor or how to merchandise it. That's the part that I excel at and the people part. So I found that I really liked retail and I wanted to go back into it. So I think that's amazing because I feel like we sort of, you know, even though we're doing kind of different things, they're very similar. And uh, we both kind of, you know, came I don't know, not full circle, but, uh, you know, like people think of, you know, what I do, doing computery stuff, web stuff, right? Um, you know, you're in a closet and you're, you know, sort of like Nick is right now, you know, sitting in the, sitting in the hole right. with no, you know, isolation chamber. And I hate that. Uh, you know, when I was, uh, whatever, when I was in middle school, probably, and everybody hates everybody, uh, I think that that was probably fine, right? But I totally hate that. And, yeah. I, you know, I get I'm not that lovable of a person, but I like other people. And um, so that's hard. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I, retail's hard, but it's rewarding. It is, absolutely. And uh, I, I get to work with small businesses and I, I feel like that same thing. Uh, some some of it's just uh, living vicariously through them and, you know, kind of helping them with things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I find retail to be rewarding, just um, working with people on a day to day basis and helping them find that perfect thing. And the look on their face is what does it for me. You know, when they find that perfect item or like when I help a homecoming girl, when she finds that perfect dress, the look of joy on her face makes my entire day. I had a girl. A uh, couple weeks ago that I posted her on Facebook, she came in. She was very frustrated. She had been looking for dresses, uh, was kind of frustrated at that point, which makes my job a little bit tougher. I ended up pulling a dress for her. She was like, eh, I, I don't know. And I said, just try it, honey. Just trust me, try it. She tried it, absolutely loved it. I thought she was going to cry. She asked me if she could hug me. I was like, absolutely. Um, she was so excited. And she walked out of there with that dress, and she's wearing it to homecoming and is super excited about it. And that made my night, absolutely. That nice. was rewarding. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you are uh, located on the corner of Walnut and Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, why'd you pick there? Well, I was actually looking at other spots. Um, so what are some of the ones you turned down? It's been 11 years. You're not going to break any. Feelings. I was actually looking at that little strip mall across from uh, Notre Dame mm. High School. Um, just, you know, I, looking at different spots, looking all around. And then actually my sister at the time worked for Channel 2. She was a news producer. And one of the reporters there, Mick Trevi, said, oh, your sister should look in the Broadway district if mm. she's looking to open a business. And I had been gone from Green Bay for five, six years. So I was like, ugh, no. Because of course I had the vision of old Broadway. I didn't know anything that had happened down there. So then I drove down the street and I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't look anything like what I remember. Hmm. And the corner spot happened to be open. So I called my best friend and I said, you know, I'm kind of thinking of opening a boutique. And she was like, yeah, no kidding. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, there's a spot in the Broadway district. I said, right on the corner of Broadway and Walnut. And she said, that's my friend Tim Pollock's building. Go talk to him right now. So I said, okay, and I'm going to drop your name. <laughs> and I did. And I ended up talking to the landlords, Kurt and Tim, and submitting my business plan and everything. And lo and behold, I got the spot. Nice. Yeah, and it's, I mean prime location on the corner. I couldn't have asked for a better location. So you're happy with that. Um, and uh, you've been there 11 years. What, like, uh, do you remember when, like, what time of year you opened? July 21st, 2004. Okay. So your business is, uh, <clears throat> math is hard, four months younger than Max. Yeah. 
So that sort of blows my mind because <laughs> uh, he's a large human now. Yeah. And he's getting, I remember him when he was, yeah, absolutely. So that, yeah, that blows my mind. When You know, like I, I gauge things in terms of Max now and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's, he's going into middle school this year. So oh, like, God. yeah. Yeah. So that, that sort of blows me away. I, uh, I don't think about, I think of you as being one of the new businesses. Like that's crazy yeah. to me. No, I'm, I'm old hat. <laughs> I'm a seasoned veteran. No, and apparently. you totally are. You know, and I and I said that the other day. You know, there's some there's some uh, pillars, if you will, in the district, and you're one of those, uh, for crazy. sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what is your um, what do you like about being down down there now? You know, things have changed over 11 years. Talk to that a little bit. Uh, you know, I love the district. Um, I think it's probably the best place in Green Bay. It's so eclectic down there. There's so many different elements, so many different people. Um, I've loved to watch the changes over the years, to watch the district grow, to watch some of those empty storefronts that were there when I was there get filled. Um, the farmer's market, I've you know, I was there, I think it was the second year when I was there, when there was, you know, a couple tables and a couple people. So to watch that just grow in exponential numbers year by year and to the point where we are now the second largest in the state next to Madison. I mean, wow, what an accomplishment that is. And just to, it's been nice to watch Broadway become the place in Green Bay to be, whereas it used to be the place you did not want to be. That's That's been a great change. So... Um, yeah, so the, you mentioned the farmer's market's a, a good change. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other good changes that you noticed? Um, just the amount of businesses that are down there. Um, the, you know, the retail has increased. Uh, it's become more of a, a more of a well-rounded district where you can spend the day there. It's not just a place where you're, you're going to visit one store and then leave. You can stroll the street. There are plenty of other stores to look at. Um, there's great restaurants to eat at. So that's, you know, that's been really great um, just to see all the different people and just to see, you know, the crowds that we get for all the events. Again, whereas Broadway, you didn't, you didn't used to want to come down there. Now it's like, oh gosh, that's going on on Broadway. Let's go. I mean, how great is that? Uh, <clears throat> have you been to the new cannery? I haven't yet, but I sent some customers down last week, and then they came back, and they told me they loved it. So I was like, oh, excellent. So, you know, I've seen the pictures, but uh, I took a peek in there. Uh, last night we were there for uh, Heather from Titletown had a going away party. And um, so I snuck over and just kind of checked things out, and it's really – the pictures don't do justice. Super yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, they have, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you know, but there's a little uh, like market area yep. where you can buy stuff. And then there's sort of a restaurant part with a with a bar. Uh, really nice. Uh, probably out of my price range, but super yeah. nice. Yeah. My customers nice. did say it was a little, <laughs> a little pricey. But it looks like it, it. It's not just your average, you know. Right. Like it's but a, they loved it. It's a it, good first date place, right? Right. <laughs> Impressive. Right. Uh, so, uh you think everything is, uh, well, let me say it differently. Uh, do you think there's anything missing in that would help your business, that would, you know, make downtown better? You know, we talk about that Larson Green area where we, you know, we have all this stuff that people don't want. What do, what do you want there? What kind of stuff uh, would you like to see happen uh, on, in the district? You know, I'd like to see some more stores. I'd like to see some more retail. Um, a children's store would be great. We don't have that. That's not really addressed. Um, we have a lot of women's clothing, but I'd like to see maybe another women's clothing with an older demographic. Um, we have the ones that are in the district now, we kind of all have the same demographic. So I'd like to see something with maybe lean toward a little bit older demographic. Um, I'd like to see a home store. We used to have FET um, when I started. She was down there and that was great. You know, like home, not furnishings, but you know, more like your dinnerware, your you know stuff like that. I think that would be, That'd be great too. She was probably too early. That, but she had a really good business. I think yep. she left only because her husband got transferred. Right, right. But I think it would be going gangbusters right now. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. She'd yeah. be doing great. Yeah. With all the traffic in the district now. So um, I get mixed messages on that. You, you know, you, you talked about traffic in the district, um, farm events, for instance. Um, I hear some of the businesses say that that impacts their business negatively. Um, so, you know, how, what do you think about that? Anything? 
Um, well, I feel, you know, for some of them, it is a logistics kind of thing. Um, and, and they, you know, with their business, if, if it's more of a service business, then, you know, the traffic is harder for you because your clients are coming there specifically to see you. So it makes it harder for them on a Wednesday when you can't find any parking. Um, so that I could see a, a service business being impacted a little bit. Retail, I, I couldn't understand why a retail business would be impacted negatively because it's 8,000 people walking the street. And, um, I mean, we're ringing all night long that night. Our cash register is ringing. We are running around the store helping people. We have a booth on the street, you know. Um, and for me, it's, you know, even if your cash register isn't ringing that night, it's from a marketing standpoint. Where are you ever going to get 8,000 people to see your storefront? I mean, that's just, it's free marketing. Right. Yeah, and 8,000 people that are have already made sort of a mental investment right. in the district. Right. They're not just seeing a billboard as they're passing by, right? Um, yeah. Um, I always wonder that, too. But um, <clears throat> you For know, some businesses, I could, I could understand, you know, larger ticket items are not the thing that people are going to come down to right. farmer's market for. So then, you know, those businesses might struggle a little bit because that's not a, a decision. A large purchase is not a decision you're going to make at farmer's market. A shirt pair of earrings a per, you're going to make that a farmer's market that's a impulse buy that's so you know i think about those things but like uh i think then i think about my mom and i think that's when she would do something like that you know she would say you know i'd like to buy a new couch you know she's not going to take it home maybe that night but like I'm going to buy that right now. You know, I'm in a good mood. I'm walking the street. I, you know, I got some wine. I got some flowers. I need a couch, you know, <laughs> or, or, or whatever, you know, some, something larger like that. Not everybody, but, uh, I just, I feel like, uh, you can't, uh, you, boy, you know, before we had 8,000 people on the street, you know, everybody's like, Bring me customers. Right. right. <laughs> so I, you know, I feel like it's a good problem to have. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So you know, we we went from it, my view in the district is we went from uh, how are we ever going to fill these these storefronts and how are we ever going to bring customers down to how are we ever going to find enough parking spots for all of these people? Right. Right. Yeah. So it's pretty phenomenal. Not a bad problem. Um. So uh, the clock has the time. So I, not the not the counter. So I don't know where we're oh, at. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I can switch that. I just feel like it's about time. <laughs> it's 20, 23. That should do it, right? Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. So okay. So, uh, and you haven't listened to many shows. So, uh, you know, you do whatever is, is, is appropriate here. But uh, what I like to do is... Um, <laughs> I just got a text from uh, from Sean at Titletown that, uh, and we're not taping yet. But he said, "Good morning, sir. Don't forget about Christina's glass breakage." So I have to make sure to mention that. <laughs> He's, it's very important to him. It's very important. That's very cool. nice. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have at least one more listener. I'm very excited. Hey, about that. you're up to what six now? We have no. That'll be seven. Seven. I mean, I don't know if we're keeping the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> you know, it's well. I mean, this one's gonna be huge because. It's Nicole, and right, right. You're you're a, you're <laughs> notorious, no not, not, notable. Okay, yeah, notorious. I'm not sure if I. <laughs> I don't know. Not sure if that's a good. Thing. Notorious makes me think of that Duran Duran song. Uh, so oh, yeah. so now uh, is when we thank my sponsor, which is Camera Corner Studios. So they uh, they bring all this stuff to me, and I would like your take on that because it gets boring, you know, for listeners to hear what I have to say, and maybe what even what Nick has to say. So what do you think when you walked in here? Was this what you expected? Give me your yeah. I mean a little bit because I saw the pictures and stuff. Um, I mean I think it's great that they're sponsoring and I mean what a you know what a nice partnership and a good thing for them to do and so that's you're pretty lucky. I am pretty lucky. I'm a pretty lucky guy. Well, and we're here really to serve you know the small businesses in the area as well as you know individuals that have creative minds that may not have the means to put their own production together. You know to. To those out there that haven't listened to the other, what are we on? Seven, eight? I think this is eight. Eight counting zero. I have to. I have to. So this I, is episode seven. Really, but we really had unprofessional. A zero. I should. I should have the number right. <laughs> that should be at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. We'll get it. What, we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> but yeah, if you haven't listened to the other seven episodes, I mean, the the studio's concept is um, that we fill in the gaps 
for what you don't have. Uh, if you just need a room and you're going to bring your own camera, bring your own talent, we've got a room. And that can be it. If you need to make a TV commercial and you don't have cameras, you don't have lighting, you don't have microphones, you don't have actors, you don't have voiceover people, we can do all of that too. Or if you want to do a live weekly TV show, we can even do that. So Ooh, it's maybe that's what I should do. See, there you are. See, I, I should have my own TV show. Why not? We've actually Fashion have a, show? a right. couple could even just of be clients. seasonal. It doesn't have to be like an every week kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Right. And and that would be the idea. So, uh, you know, right now we're just using the audio system, but I do have up to four different camera angles. Uh, you know, we have uh, some 3D modeling, some post-production things here. You see the, the green screen is up for today. I have to take that down. It's getting rented tomorrow. But, um, you know, it's really a, a build as you need. The more equipment that you can bring, the more talent you can lend. I mean, the lower your cost is going to be. Uh, everything is built a la carte. So anything from a multi-camera live stream around $400 to $65 for a room with lights and bring your own stuff, bring your own talent. So we can fit any budget. Yeah. Well, from an audio standpoint, I mean, I don't know if Nicole noticed all this stuff, but there's like the, the crazy microphone up above. Like I, I, I refer to that as the just in case microphone. Exactly. Is, is that accurate? Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, you know, before we use that to, to, you know, we had an audience member and we were like, well, maybe the audience member is going to want to hoot and holler or something. Right. So it's, things are mobile. There's, uh, extra microphone set up. I think, you know, there's in this little box here, there's room for three other guests with me. So, uh, we could have a little round table. Kind or of if thing. we really needed to, we talked about this. I, I can take guests by phone if needed. We might have to do that because my friends that got married, they, uh, they hit the road. They're back in Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We can probably do that though. Yeah. So that'd be fun. I would like to try oh. that, give that a try, see if that works. Yeah. So, you know, it's super flexible. Nick is a genius and, uh, and he's humble. But he, he is a genius at this stuff, and this is all due to him. I look behind me, and there's this amazing contraption with wires hanging out of it. I think I know what that does. Oh, that thing. <laughs> I'm not really I'm sure. I'm like, what are you referring to? The the, the stage box the for those of you box. audio technicians. I don't know. It My stage box looks is amazing. exciting. You know, it's like when people come to tour our place back in the day. They didn't know what any of the stuff was. If mm -hmm. the things had blinkies, that was amazing to them. So, I get the same feeling because I show our data center once in a while and it's yeah. like, oh, there's a lot of boxes with a lot of things in them. Yeah. Yeah. They're not interested in seeing the wires or the, the specs. They want to see the blinkies. Right. So we had to get boxes that had blinkies. We actually <laughs> did that. For a while, we had a box with blinkies that wasn't hooked up to anything. Wonderful. That was b way back in the day. So a little trade secret. Well, you just got to put your switch back there and then your SAN and you'll get blinkies, right? Right, right. Yeah. And I had a, I had a friend who was a tech nerd when we uh, we actually had our grand opening and nothing was hooked up yet. And he's like, <laughs> uh, and this was uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, and he, he called me out on it. He's like, you know, that's not hooked up, right? And I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyway, in. I digress, but uh, I I am con I, I every time I come here I notice something, and maybe that's because some of the things are out in the field or whatever. But I notice new things every time I come here. So there's like a, f a flash system with a diffuser over there. There's everything anybody that f in photography or audio would need. I think. Right. Yeah. And you know, like a, a great opportunity. We've shot catalogs for people before. You know, um, there's a local designer, Lucy Lou. Um, we've shot for her um so product yeah. photography yeah nice yeah, absolutely and and again it comes down to if you have a photographer that you want their look you know bring them in right. we have the room we have changing areas bathrooms you know prep areas so again just give me a call uh at 920-272-0148 we can talk about how to make the studio work for you yeah so do you uh do you have any other little uh uh anecdotes or not um i i do but i'm not sure yet that i can release no, cool. the names no that's cool so uh there are some exciting things coming nice uh that will definitely cement our spot nice and uh you know i will be very glad to talk about them once i know that i'm allowed to nice so uh that's exciting yeah nick makes this all possible so i don't know if you recall i put this post out like i don't know two months ago on facebook mm -hmm. and i said hey i'm thinking about starting this podcast and a lot of people acted like they were interested in doing it right um it's a little bit harder to you know 
get them to actually commit because I think they get stage fright, right? Um, which is a little crazy um, because there's only six listeners. Well, and scheduling <laughs> too. I mean, no, that's I know, probably I know. the biggest it, it is tougher to schedule. I, yeah, very true, very true. Um, but I, I had like, I don't know what I was up to. There were like 40 or 50 people that committed, you know, kind of semi-committed, right? And then, uh, and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna actually have to do this. <laughs> And uh, and then Nick is like, "Hey, uh, do you know how to do that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> right." right. <laughs> and he's like, "Well, I just so happen to have a perfect podcast studio for you." And I'm like, "I don't have any money," <laughs> and uh, so he is helping me out tremendously. That's he's awesome. doing all the work he had the microphones helping another small business it's amazing so i can't uh you know i can't thank nick especially because he had his ear to the ground but camera recorder studios they have all this stuff and it's super helpful and we're glad to be able to put the show on like i said i i feel that this is a show that deserves to be heard even if it's only by 14 ears thank you 14 ears nice yeah seven people (laughs) i can do math assuming they all have two Or two working years, right? <laughs> well, I mean, technically, there's six years listening right now. So, oh, true. But that, yeah, okay, fine. So I mean, we're all on. We're, boost, we're boosting our numbers. There we are. Right. So we're like up to twenty years. Doesn't count on iTunes or Feedburner <laughs> or whatever, but close enough. So you know, Paul Stanley only has like one ear. Yes. That's pretty crazy. Right. I, I, I I feel like I should have known that, but he kind of keeps it under wraps. And then I read his book. His book is phenomenal. If you haven't read it yet, I haven't read it yet. It's amazing. Um, I have the audio book. I should I should get it to you. Yeah, I haven't read it yet. But yeah, uh, and I he mean, reads it. He reads it. To be a oh, that's even better. And he so. talk he talks about this. Uh, and they're entrepreneurs, right? Oh, absolutely. So like what I what I what I take from that is like this like laser focus entrepreneurism and he tells this story and I don't know if it's true or not and maybe I told you this already but he tells this story about he would flick pennies into the road and watch Gene Simmons chase after them <laughs> I don't doubt it <laughs> and that just I don't know so every book I read you know whatever it has a thousand pages it has a hundred pages I end up like distilling it down to one sentence and like that's the sentence I remember out of that book and it was it was amazing there was it's a great book I can't uh, yeah I, besides being a great band they're just great entrepreneurs I mean they've built it into such a market that you know I mean they're not just a band there's just a whole to do that goes along with right. it and you know I was thinking about that I'm sure in their early days they probably did but um, they don't do any cover songs I can't think of any. I don't. I don't know whether we have to talk about Kiss, but no, I don't. Think I, I, I thought don't. that was. I, I don't think I. So, have. you know, they are for uh, for better or worse. You know, they have a sound and they are all original. So, you know, they might not be artists like some people would say, right? They're not right. singer songwriters who just you know. But although they have some of those types of songs, they uh, they're not they're not the typical thing, and I think that turns some people off. They're, it's it's too commercialized, right? Right. But they're selling. They are always closing the sale, right? <laughs> and they've been how I mean, how many years? A lot. That's a lot. Pretty long career. They like they were old when we were young. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a pretty long career. Yeah. So. Uh, um, tell me about some like I think that's something we sort of have in common is like. Uh, we grew up at the same time. We're like right. the same age, right? So there's certain types of music that we like. The people that are not our age just look at us and roll their eyes. Oh, absolutely. So like, uh, um, I don't think I ever really f- asked you what what's your favorite what's your favorite band? Do you have a favorite, or do you have a couple favorites? Current or because I don't really either know. Way. Either way, not... either way. Do you still listen to that stuff as much as you pretend to? Oh my God! Yes, I'm such oh. an '80s hair band girl. So I don't. <laughs> I do. Uh, I really, totally. I really do not. But you know, <laughs> if I'm in the car and it comes up on my, you know, now I now I do Apple Music and it has like the section that's for you. Mine looks like I'm as crazy as I probably am. You know, there's like modern singer songwriter stuff. There's '90s grunge, and then there's some hair metal stuff, and it's uh, it's weird. Oh yeah, so, I'm I to- I'm a total '80s hair band girl. So you did. So you, did you ever make the jump to grunge? No, I did not like grunge. I did not like when that moved in and took away my hair bands. I was highly upset about that. So, I I went actually from hair bands to hip hop, okay. like hip hop and R and B. So it was yeah. 
totally opposite. Yeah. So uh, that sort of fits your uh, if we if we're writing a book about Nicole, that sort of fits your narrative, right? About fashion and big hair, right? right? So you don't have any favorites? Oh, from that time, at from White Snake. Any? You like White Snake? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, still to this day. Love. So that's barely a band. It's really a dude. Well, yeah, it really. It's <laughs> all about David Coverdale, really. <laughs> so, uh, really? Yes. I know my friends tease me because, you know, they're like, yeah, he's great for being 80, which he's not, but. He's pretty close. But he's 62. Well, I, I don't see. I, I don't know how old the, all these other guys are, but that's. I don't know. I mean, I guess we're all older than we used to be, but absolutely, that was but twenty years ago. Here's another guy that was old when we were young. You know, <laughs> right, right. I mean, he was already older for that time. Right. Yeah. That's so. That's. Uh, I so when 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 someone says White Snake, I have this vision of uh, of. Um, <laughs> this is uh, this is crazy and weird and embarrassing, but. Um, I remember like putting, I think it was a cassette yet. I put the cassette into the little boom box thing mm -hmm. and I would crank it all the way up in the backyard. And we had this neighbor with a pool at the time. And I would always, it was in summertime, I think when, you know, their, like their hits were out. Right. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what year that was. Um, but I would sit in the backyard and this this girl I don't remember her name. She went to school with me at Preble, I think, and she'd be out. They had a pool. She'd be out at the pool, and she would she would notice when I turned it on. <laughs> that was it. That was the whole thing. I turned it on because of whatever it was music I wanted to listen to too. But I, you know, part of it was to make sure she knew that I was playing it. Right, trying uh, to get the chick. How bizarre. No, and I really <laughs> and like. Uh, and I, uh, I don't really remember, but I think she, you know, she, I think she had some boyfriend, probably bigger than me. Whatever. I was scrawny little high school boy, and uh, so it wasn't like that. And I think I was too young for it to be like that. Any, it was weird. It was really weird. <laughs> but that's what that always makes me think of now. <laughs> and Tawny Katane, who well, yeah, who doesn't think of Tawny Katane? Who subsequently went completely insane, right? Uh. Yeah, I think a little spousal <laughs> abuse involved there like, <laughs> on her end. Yeah. Right, which is yeah. uh, which does happen, by the way. That does happen. Sometimes wives do beat on husbands. Right. Apparently, she is one of them. And I'm not naming any names. <laughs> I'm not going to either. No, Gina's very nice to me. She sent me. Uh, I had to rush out, and she's got to put up with you. So that's you know, the, we got to give her some points. <laughs> It changes you. You know, I think, uh, um, you know, my mom gets some criticism. She had five boys. And, you know, we all share the same bad points. <laughs> We're very different. My four brothers and I are very different, but we all share the same bad points. And she had to put up with all of us. Oh, so woman. that makes you, that changes you. Yeah. And not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, My dad had three girls, so he had to put up with three girls. See, and I, to, to me, because all I know is boys, really. Uh, I wouldn't even, that's terrifying to me. Yeah. It's he, scary. Yeah, three girls. I was supposed to be the boy, and then I ended up to be the most girly. So it's kind of what you get. Wish, you know. See, isn't that funny? Um, so Max was supposed to be twin girls. Oh. Because he was in vitro. Oh, okay. And we just assumed that's what was going to happen, because it's like 50-50, you're going to have one or two. Right. And it's like 70-30, whatever. I don't know what the exact numbers are, but, you know, it's gonna be a girl so we're like well we'll very good chance we'll have twin girls so we're like envisioning we're gonna get like the 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 double thing and uh you know and then we go get the ultrasound and she's like you know the the ultrasound lady she's like looks like my three sons and i'm like uh what, right? what, what? <laughs> but uh i'm super glad that max is not a girl because i would have corrupted that poor girl Probably. So badly. Probably. Not well, that you haven't corrupted Max, probably. I feel better about that, though. No. I feel less bad. Right. <laughs> I'm not up on my history, but would that be our first female mayor? Oh, very true. Very right. true. Yeah. Max is going to be mayor. I don't oh, know if you excellent. know that. He's been endorsed uh, by Scott Eastman. I think Randy, too, right? And Randy. 
Excellent. And and by the current mayor. So I feel like he's got a pretty good uh, lock on it. I'm looking uh, forward to unless it. you're running. No, no, okay. I don't want that job. And you know, I have enough on my plate. I already, I already warned Rhonda. You know, if she's going to run, she's she's going to have to get get in gear because he's going to be ready. He's got. A, I can see it. Two two cycles. He's got to wait for the next election, and then the one after that, he can run. I can see it. You ready for that? Oh yeah, I'm ready. You ready for an 18, 19 year old mayor? Sure. Hey, it worked in Manitowoc, it, right? It did work in Manitowoc, and I, uh, so he, that guy was actually he he's a very involved guy. The, uh, uh, I think it's Justin Nichols, yeah. in Manitowoc, and uh, he was actually at Gina's class reunion. And if you do the math, she is not as young as him. I don't think I'm surprising anybody there. Right. But uh, they had the they had the class reunion at the yacht club, and he happened to be there. And he's he's in his twenties now. He's not you know everybody gets older, right? Mm-hmm. But I think I think he was kicking back, had a cigar in his hand, and uh, he's aging quickly <laughs> in a good in a good way in a good way. And uh, uh, some of the city council people were actually in Gina's class, and so you know that was a topic of discussion that night. It was very interesting. And so yeah. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so Nicole is super involved. Tell me about some of the things like outside of business or even like business related that you're involved in that aren't your business. I know you do that runway thing. Yeah, tell me I about do that. The uh, runway for life in May. It's um, we partner with Prevea. They are the sponsors of the event. It's a fashion show for cancer survivors. So basically, eighty-five to ninety percent of the models are cancer survivors. Um, some are going through it currently when they walk the runway. I'm the model and vendor coordinator for the show, so I work with all the local boutiques on setting all that up, and then I work on coordinating all the models, recruiting them, assigning them to boutiques, um, all of that. I've been doing it, I've been probably involved with the show for seven years on the committee for five. Um, I think there's only two of us that have been on it that long. And um, it's a great show. It's extremely rewarding. It's great to see these survivors walk down the runway. We um, have them hold a pink rose to indicate that they're a survivor. And just the cheers that they get and the claps. And some of them, you can just see it on their face. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I did this. And it's really exciting for them. Um, we also have a children's run in the show. So that's, that's a tougher run to watch the kids walk down um, and know that they're going through this. Our youngest model this year was two. Our oldest um, was 80. She's a seasoned pro. She's done it for me for several years. So she's a seasoned pro. Um, and we always pick a local charity. The money stays local. So every every cent raised goes to a local cancer charity. So that's a great event. So you said you've been doing that how long? Um, I've been involved with the show for about seven years and on the committee for five. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and... I was the only vendor to show up to be on the committee. <laughs> That's how I got. <laughs> they had a vendor meeting. I suggested that they had a vendor meeting after one of the shows because I felt that it it didn't run as smoothly that year. So they had a vendor meeting, and I was the only vendor to show up. So then I amazing how I that said, works. Well, I guess I'll just be on the committee. <laughs> so, so how did you get into that? Oh, uh, they approached me just about I. For the first two years, I was just a vendor. So I just merely came to the show. You know, I dressed the models, sold at the show, that kind of thing. And then that's when I suggested, you know what, you really need to have a vendor meeting to see what went wrong with the vendors, what's, you know, kind of a wrap-up. And like I said, I was the only vendor that showed. Well, I I had suggested you need a model coordinator. You can't just send models into stores randomly when we as owners, we don't know when they're coming. We we're not prepared for them they could come when i'm dealing with five customers i can't help you find an outfit for the show i can't give you my full attention so i suggested having a model coordinator so what i do is i coordinate all the models and then i divide them out between the stores evenly by age Hmm. by size you know i make sure that everybody gets a size range everybody gets a range of models in their 20s 30s 40s 50s and then i email all that information out to the store so they know who their models are what sizes they're prepared and then they can schedule their appointments when it's convenient for them nice so you uh you have this ability to see a need and propose a fix and then implement the fix i try 
I I think that that is something that uh, I don't know if if people like I and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm sort of like that. Um, probably not as good, but I think that there's I don't know if we're born with that or or if some something goes wrong in our brains, but um, there's something about entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that. Uh, there's a clarity, you know, there's all these possibilities, like there's unlimited possibilities of what could happen. And we pick one and we do it. Right. So I, I, I always thought it was because I was a Libra. That's what I was. I'm also a Libra. <laughs> well, that's, that's Libras are objective. They can weigh both sides of the scales. That's our sign. So we weigh both sides of the situation. We tend quickly to be, yeah, we and tend make to decisive be the, action. The advice givers. We tend to right. be the, yeah. So, and, I, I I'm not all into that astrology stuff, but uh, but I do think that those are characteristics that mm-hmm. people like us have, right? Um, I don't know that it means we're all born in the same month because I don't think that's true, but uh, but I do think that I have some of that, yeah. Um, and I know you have a lot of that. Where okay, I heard this and uh, this makes sense, so let's you know do do the right thing. I think I'm pretty objective about things. Um, well, I my female counterparts would probably hate me to say this, but I feel like I'm more of a male when it comes to business. Men tend to be a little bit more objective. Women tend to be a little bit more emotional. That's just by nature. That's just yeah. who we are. Um, uh, you know what? I actually, uh, I don't think it's that. I think that uh, it's just different emotions. Because uh, yeah. I think that I'm a pretty emotional guy. I think Scott Eastman's a pretty emotional guy. Yeah. Um, but it's it's different, right? Um I mean, and everyone's different, but I think that uh, um, Scott used this uh, this phrase like, you know, if if he's happy or I'm happy, everyone running around us is likely going to be happy. Right. If we're not happy with how things are going, it's gonna it's gonna we're bring gonna the room help. down, right? Yeah. Or, yeah it, so, uh, and I think you have a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, so I think we're all, you know, I, I'm going to put all the three of us in that camp, right? Um, we're kind of all, I'll, I will put Gina in there too, you know, entrepreneurs like us, I feel like, um, I don't know, it's, it's a leadership thing, right? So mm-hmm. it's, that's Definitely. sort of, it's sort of infectious one way or the other, but, uh, um, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Um, so, uh, you do the runway thing and then, uh, you're involved in some other organizations. Um, I also do the um, help out with the prom fashion show that happens every year at the Radisson. Um, we used to partner with the chamber and partners in education. It raises money for prom, like safe prom parties, so that the kids aren't out going crazy after prom. Um, so I do that. I partner with them for that. Um, Business wise, I'm very involved in the Broadway district. I'm on the bid board. Um, I also head the business owners organization, um, try to keep us all together and, you know, cohesive down there. So, yeah, I kind of have my hand in. So let's take those things uh, sort of backwards. So uh, the last one you said was the Broadway business owners, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And that's another example where you saw a need. Yes. And you just kind of took the reins on that. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that. uh, We used to have monthly meetings, you know, and um, then the person that led them kind of left the district. So then we kind of didn't have any. And then somebody else took over and they really weren't productive meetings. They were more negativity. And for me, that doesn't that doesn't do anything. I think they need to be productive. I think I think they're important. I think monthly touch bases with fellow business owners are important because many of us, we are inside our businesses daily. We don't get to leave. We don't get to visit with each other. We don't get to, you know, even just as simple as, you know, what's going on with you? What's going well? Hey, is this working for you? This is really working for me. That, stuff like that's important. So we weren't really having those. And so I decided, you know what, we need to get back on track. We need to get those. So I just decided that I would head that head that up. And so I took it upon myself to head it up, kind of walked around, touched base with all the businesses, let them know that, hey, this is going to be starting up again. I'm going to be the point person for it. Um, this is what we're going to do. And so just kind of took it on. And I think it's been working well. We've had good response. I've seen a lot of business participation. I've seen a lot of people participate that hadn't previously. 
So that's, you know, really encouraging. Um, like I said, I think they're important for us to touch base as a group. We're all in the same district. Mm-hmm. We all have the same goals in mind. If I'm successful, you're going to be successful. If you're successful, I'm going to be successful. The success of the district depends on us. So, you know, it's nice to have those touch bases and see, what, hey, what's going on? What's positive? What's negative? What's, you know. So I think you've been doing phenomenally well with that. Thank you. Uh, you know, and attendance, you know, goes up and down. Absolutely. But, you know, it depends on what's going on. Summer's a little harder for people. There's a lot going on. There's, you know. But even that being said, uh, I feel like uh, attendance has been pretty good. Yeah. I really. would say it's pretty steady. Like uh, the only one that was a, uh, a downer, like down for attendance wise was the one last month. Yeah. But, you know, I heard nothing but good stuff about yesterday. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of the business owners. Right. Uh, everyone said, you know, I saw some of the Facebook things. Gina was there. Everyone said things were very productive. Yes. Um, and uh, you did a good job of handling that. Uh, Thank you. I hope. It's, well, it's it's an impossible task, right? It uh, is. It you is. Know, you you have, have a lot of different personalities in the same room, a lot of different ideas. Um, so I, I guess that's part of it where my objectivity comes in. I can't. I, I can't Nothing can be personal. I have to sit back and kind of take the feedback from everybody. And, you know, everybody has valid points. And every business owner on that street is important. There isn't anybody that's more important than anybody else. We are all important. We are that community. So. Well, and we don't want empty storefronts. Absolutely you know, not. I, I, uh, um, so, yeah, a few, few things come to mind there. Um, uh, Scott mentioned, because he's moving in, you know, next to... Uh, like Jake's Pizza Red, he's moving into mm-hmm. uh, that sp- spot there, and uh, he mentioned the Boost Mobile store that's there. Yes, and how they have some. Um, I don't know how he characterized it, but some uh, you know flashy lights. Yes, and it doesn't really fit, right? Uh, no. But that being said, I said to Scott, you know, uh, I would rather it's full the spots full and we try to work with them then have it empty and have to work on trying to get somebody in there. Right. Right. So I'm all, that's, that's where my head is usually at, but yeah, I wish they would get rid of the lights too. But. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it, it doesn't, I mean, our district, our district is kind of eclectic and quaint and um, I feel like that is more strip mall type. Even there, like, I don't know, that, that kind of look just doesn't really fit anywhere. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's bright. It's certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know. Bright, bright could be okay, but it's the, like the string of lights around that I think particularly bothered him. And I, I see where he's coming from on that. Oh yeah. And, um, okay. So that's the Broadway business owners group Mm -hmm. that we were kind of talking through. And, uh, that's all business owners, all entrepreneurs. Yes. And. Uh, that is a constant struggle. I don't think I'm overstating to try to keep that moving forward. Absolutely. And I think you do a phenomenal job of that, really. Thank you. And I don't Thank think you. that you get um, really enough credit for that. Because um, if you stopped, it would stop, I feel. So don't stop. I think that's really no, it's, I, it's important. I plan to keep going. And it's important for communication more than anything absolutely Uh, and we're lucky in our district to have it because um you know i've talked to people that own businesses in other districts and you know and like in ashwabanon they don't have any sort of cohesiveness between business owners they don't meet they don't i mean you kind of you don't even know your neighbors whereas broadway we're kind of a family and that was what attracted me to the spot in the first place was I did go to one of those meetings when they had them and everybody was so welcoming. And I was like, gosh, this is a great place. Everybody's kind of like family. I mean, we all kind of watch out for each other and it's not a competitiveness, even if, you know, we have the same sort of merchandise or we're in the same, you know, kind of category. We're not competitive with each other. You know, we each, you know, if I don't have it, I'm going to send them to another store down the street. If they don't have it, they're going to send them to me. I mean, we're we're all like that down there. It's, it's a lot. It's exactly like most families, I think, yeah. actually, uh, where uh, everyone has the reaction. Nobody punches my brother but me. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how I feel. Like, I feel like that kind of sums it up. Uh, you know, like, we're going to be critical of each other. Right. But 
boy, anybody else is critical, we're going to be like, uh, no, what? No, you don't get to beat up on, on my friend, my family. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, you mentioned the bid. Yes. And I think people don't really ever understand what that is. Adam is also on the bid. He he, And you did listen to some of his, you mm-hmm. said. Uh, so bid is business improvement district. Mm-hmm. So talk to that a little bit. How do you have time for all this stuff, first of all? <laughs> I don't. I think I'm stretched thin, but you know. And then, you and, then you and then you're giving me 90 minutes today. So <laughs> you do what you do. Awesome. Um, you know, it's uh, the bid is obviously we control the money that goes into the district from the taxes, and um, we kind of decide where that money goes, what it gets used for, make sure that it gets used for the district. Um, I think we've done a really a good job in that. You know, there's been several projects you know some i'm new this year so i wasn't part of like the whole planter thing um all of that but there's been several large projects that i think the bid has taken on and it basically to improve our district i mean you know we can't say enough about that money going back into the district and just improving it um it's not always fun because you know obviously there's how many business owners in the district and they have ideas about how that money should be spent too. So it's not always a fun job. You know, sometimes we make decisions that, yeah, maybe they don't quite agree with, but we always have their best interest. It's not anything that we're just, oh, we just want to spend the money. We're always thinking about the district. Right. Um, yeah. So, well, so I've been on that board since it started. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever. Um, and, uh, it's amazing because I'm the only one left that was originally there. Um, and I feel that in this last year to two years, um, we've gotten more done than ever before. Yeah. Um, but we, we are in a district of high expectations and we all expect more. Right. Um, but um, I remember very clearly uh, last uh last fall um turning to um the uh the the landscape uh the head of the landscape company that that was filling the planters and i said i'm gonna i'm gonna be impressed by what you do right you know like i i i feel like and it wasn't just me right but i feel like i was so tired of those planters not having plants in them. <laughs> oh, everybody was. Everybody was. They were just giant garbage pit ashtrays. And I'm like, whatever we have to do, we're going to do that. And there will be plants and yes. they will be beautiful. And people are going to walk away impressed. And I'm hard to impress. So I'm not going to say that like they're amazing and uh, they're a showcase, but um, they're at least up to the level where I'm not embarrassed. It's a giant leap forward from where yeah. they were. So I was very happy about that sort of progress in the last year. Absolutely. And the benches. Absolutely. Uh, like, I mean, so those are two things I'm very proud of that, that we accomplished. And it, uh, it sort of took, you know, again, some people, you know, taking things by the horns, right? but also, you know, it's easy to do that when you have, you're like, all these people behind me, they want this too, right? right. So that makes it easier. And uh, um, and the benches are beautiful. The benches and garbage cans. I mean, what a, you know, I it think, just adds some color to the district. It adds, I think it's totally kick-ass. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And um, I that, might have to paint one next time. Uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this is something we're going to have to redo every, I think probably every three to four years. I'm, probably. Yeah. And we'll see. But uh, it was fun. Uh, uh, Gina and Liz and Kyle and Max all got involved doing that. Um, I have a really crappy one with Packer colors. Yay. <laughs> um, but mine, you know, mine is not, pff, mine's horrible, you know, but I wanted to do one too, just yeah. to do it. Right. Uh, and well, it was a great way to get the community involved too in a project. We got some, because we got local artists. We got actual and, artists involved. Yeah, I mean, it was a great way to get the community involved and, it was something that needed to be done, so they're functional, but you know, you have right. little pieces of the community there. Yeah, it was very much uh, whatever, a lemon into lemonade kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because these are things that, like, I remember walking down the street uh, with uh, uh, a couple of other bid board members and taking pictures of all of the dilapidated things that we were just like thorns on our side, right? And I, one of the benches was physically deteriorating and you couldn't you couldn't sit in it you know that's 
it was a safety hazard. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, we went to the city and said, you know, I, I just remember saying very clearly, I will paint them. Just allow this to happen. And they said, okay. So, you know, ultimately that's all it really takes. Right. Which uh, I don't think uh, uh, people realize that. Um, and there's a Steve Jobs quote that I always kind of have in the back of my head. And he said, as soon as you realize that all the things around you were created by people no smarter than you you realize that you can make it put a dent into the universe true and you know we put dents in the universe i think i think so yeah um okay so bbo bid and then uh working backwards again there was uh one other thing you had uh the prom fashion show yeah so what's that all about i didn't even know about that um it's a fashion show that takes place in January every year and all of the money raised goes back to the schools. It's it's called Mr. Titletown. So actually it's the guys compete, not the girls. The guys compete for the title and there's scholarship money that gets awarded and they raise money for their schools. So it goes back to them having a safe prom party, an after prom party. Nice. So that they're not obviously running the streets after prom and you know it's usually a locked in kind of thing at the school. You know, which is great because Obviously, they can get into a little trouble, so it's better to better to have an activity for them to do and you know make sure that they're all safe. So that's one of the things I'm that I'm involved with. I've been involved with that since its inception. I think God, it's been seven or eight years now, if not more. Hmm. And then uh, one of the other things I do uh, quite frequently, I work with the DECA students at Southwest. Um, they have a fashion show too. They didn't have one last year, but usually when they have it, I'm involved with that. Or if um, you and I, you know, we did the Shark Tank, which was quite yeah. exciting. Yeah, um, I love that. Oh my God, that was great. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up. I was yeah, I was going to talk about that. That was, that was great. Um, d- the ideas that came out of there. I mean, just to see these students and their ideas. How exciting is that? You know, and makes me sit back and think, Oh my gosh. I mean. These are high school kids, and look what they're coming up with. And so that was pretty exciting. Um, And then I also work a lot with the Boys and Girls Club. I go in and talk uh, to the high school kids. Um, When they get to their – they talk about entrepreneurship. I'm usually one of the guest speakers that comes in and talks to them about what it takes to own your own business. You know, it's not for everybody. It really isn't. So what does it take? Um, it takes a lot of passion, and that's the first thing I tell them. Do do something that you have a passion for. Don't start a business just to start a business because you're going to burn out quickly. Do something that you have a passion for because you're going to spend a lot of time doing it. So make sure it's something that you enjoy. Um, you know, and I always tell them now, you know, start planning for that now. Start thinking about what you want to do. Um, but know that you have to be a risk taker to be an entrepreneur and, and know that, it's not something you do to become rich. You don't become an entrepreneur to become rich. Um, you go work for somebody else to become rich. You know, it's because it is. It's your money is dependent on you. You're the face of that business. You are, you know, so that's all stuff that you got to start planning now. Um, so do you think you're good at picking out entrepreneurs? You know, when you go to those those things with kids at? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I don't know because I don't know if they're at the level yet where they're, you know, some some of them, you know, like by the questions they ask, I can tell that, no, that's, you're in this for the wrong, you know, you're thinking you're going to get, this is a get rich quick kind of thing. Um, and don't just be an entrepreneur because you want to be your own boss. There's a lot, I have never been accountable to more people in my life <laughs> since I've opened a business. Right. Um, it's not just, oh, I can be my own boss and do what I want. Um, you have to think you have employees, stuff like that. Um, it, it's a matter of, you know, I feel, mean for my employees, I do just as much work as them, it, more. And if I didn't, they wouldn't work for me. They wouldn't respect me. Um, that's a huge part of, you know, having employees and being an entrepreneur is you got to put in the time. You got to put in the footwork. Yeah. So where I was going with that is uh, uh, on the Shark Tank, I feel like um, I... Uh, well, there's this guy, Darren Bell. He, uh, he's he been a very active Broadway volunteer, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you know Darren. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like he's a BFF now, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he has some of that. And um, I feel like I can recognize that 
and I think you probably can too. Maybe you just haven't met as many. Probably uh, not. I remember when I was uh, teaching my class at NABTC. I'm, uh, you know, and I'm I'm sorry to everybody else that was in the class, but you know, I'd have a class of whatever twenty people in it, and I felt like, yeah, only three of you should be here, you yeah. know, and only one of you is suited to be an entrepreneur, you know. So like, even in the profession that you think you're going into. <laughs> 80% of you are going to fail. Right. Well, not, you know, not everybody has what it takes to be an entrepreneur. It is, right. a, it is a special skill set. Yeah. It is, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, anything else? Oh, uh, so I have my last question that I have to ask. I think that we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up then if that's, unless there's anything else you want to throw in there. So I ask everybody, uh, when, I, when, when I ask you to come back to co-host with me, who you would like the guest to be. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. You can't get David Coverdale, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's kind of past his prime. I bet you we could. <laughs> he's busy on tour. Um, hmm, that's a really good question. Have you gotten the mayor in here for one? Uh, no, but I, I don't know if he was on the list. I should. I got to keep a list of this. You know, I I have the original list from back when you made oh, the first Facebook post. Yeah, and I looked just for the trivia. There's like. 43 people yeah. on that list. Yeah, okay. He is not one of them. No, I know. But he said he would do it. I, I talked to him separately. And uh, I believe what I, about. <laughs> what I do find interesting <laughs> is before the mayor himself was nominated to the list, his wife True. was. True. Right, right. She actually models in the fashion show in The Runway for Life. See, she we got to get her on. Yep. So, yeah. Brent from Title Town would be another. Oh, he, he, Good so one. this is what's going to happen, right? Yeah. There's the same circle of people that just keep getting brought up. So yeah, I'll have to there's so much that. going on there. So he would he would. So he's on the list. He's on multiple lists. Brent's going to have to be here. I'm going to have a room full of co-hosts for Brent. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> so you got anybody else? I don't and know. It does, you know what? Like uh, the it, I want I I kind of want them to be people that are interesting. Well, Aaron Rodgers. That everyone doesn't know about. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that shoots that. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people know about Brent, and no offense to Brent, because right. I do, I want him on in the worst way. No offense to the mayor. I love the mayor, and I would love him on in the worst way. Uh, but people, like, they have the ability to get their own press, so to speak, right? Right. right. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, it, are there people in any of these, uh, these uh, th- organizations that you think would be good? Anything like that. Those are the kinds of things. People, you know, unsung heroes, or people that are interesting, people that are like us that are bubbling under. I think um, my friend Tim Corey, who is the production manager of the fashion show. Nice. He's interesting. And he okay. um, really that show would not go on without him. Perfect. He's the one that comes up the theme every year. He's uh, builds a lot of the sets and I mean just the general design direction produces the whole show uh, it wouldn't happen without him there's no way it would and I don't know him at all so yeah that's, he's, I, he's, that's great he's that's interesting awesome I can't wait and I will have to have you co-host because I won't even necessarily know what to ask him right so that'd be awesome so uh, th- anything you want to how can people get in touch with you if they want to and uh, they can contact me at my store, obviously. Mm-hmm. it's uh, They can call me at 432. And what's that called again? Sassy Girl. Okay. Um, number is 432-7277. And I'm located on the corner of Broadway and Walnut. You can also find us on Facebook, and that gets updated on a regular basis. Anything, if you want to see what we have going on in the store, it's always on Facebook. All the new products get loaded on there the day they come in. So you're a hardcore Facebooker. I know that. I am. Yes. <laughs> so uh, then we just have this closing track that we're referring to as the special bonus track, I think. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And this is, so this is the last track on the Motra uh, EP that they, that they uh, so graciously gave to me when I said I need some music. And uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name, so I'm not even going to try. It's a special bonus track. You have, bonus to, track you have to check good. it out. So yeah, that's it. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you.